Hey everybody, it's me Jones on Jay here. After spending four great days in the awesome city of Chicago, it was time to catch a train back to O'Hare for my flight home. I'll be flying American Airlines back over to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Without further ado, let's get to the airport and check in. Departure board, my flight to Philadelphia this evening departs out of gate age 12, so let's head there now. Here is my plane, an American Airlines Boeing 737-800 with registration November 939 November November. American Airlines has nine boarding groups. The first ones are for first class, priority boarding, and people with high status on American Airlines and or one more. And the later groups are for everyone else. I was in boarding group six. For this flight, I was seated at seat 28A. Just like my flight to Chicago, this plane also features American Airlines' newest cabin on the domestic fleet. As you can see, legroom is fine, but not great. I do like the inclusion of a USB port and power outlet at every seat, but rather than using IFE screens like Delta or soon United, American Airlines instead expects that you'll bring your own device for entertainment and provides a device holder for you to use. Overall, the seat is fine, better than the low cost carriers, but not amazing. On its way to one of our many destinations across the globe, made possible by our dedicated team members who all do it for one reason, you. That's why your safety and well-being are so important to us. Let's go through some in-flight instructions so we can get you safely on your way. First, make sure your seat is upright. All larger electronic devices are put away and your tray table is stowed. Seat back device holders must be stowed for taxi, takeoff, and landing. If you have a carry-on, place it all the way under the seat in front of you. Larger carry-on luggage goes in the overhead bin. If you have small handheld devices, such as cell phones, tablets, and smart watches, please switch them to airplane mode now. If your electronic device falls into your seat, Please do not adjust your seat and contact a crew member for assistance. If you are seated at an overwing exit, your window shade must remain open for taxi, takeoff, and landing. If you haven't already fastened your seatbelt, 
Insert the metal end into the buckle and pull the strap so it's tight across your hips. To open your seatbelt, lift the top of the buckle. And remember, seatbelts should be fastened whenever you're seated in case of unexpected turbulence. U.S. law requires compliance with lighted and posted signs and crew member instructions. All flights are non-smoking, including e-cigarettes, vape devices, and smokeless tobacco. It's against the law to tamper with, disable, or destroy the lavatory smoke detectors. Doing so may result in a fine. For safety reasons, e-cigarettes and vape devices may not be plugged into any power source while on board the airplane. The safety card in your seat pocket explains the safety features of this airplane, including the location and operation of exits and flotation devices. But of course, don't hesitate to ask our crew members questions. This airplane has two exit doors in the front, four window exits over the wings, and two exit doors in the back. Take a moment to locate the nearest one, and keep in mind, it may be behind you. All door exits have evacuation slides to use in the unlikely event of an emergency. When directed to exit, jump onto the slide and move away from the airplane. In a water evacuation, life rafts are located in marked ceiling compartments. All exits are clearly marked with signs and opening instructions. If needed, exit path lighting in the aisle will illuminate near the floor to guide you to an exit indicated by signs and lights. In the event of an emergency, leave all belongings and proceed to the closest usable exit. If needed, oxygen masks will drop from an overhead compartment. Remain seated with your seatbelt fastened and pull the mask down to start the flow of oxygen. Place the mask over your nose and mouth and put the elastic band over your head. Pull the straps to tighten and breathe normally. You should always put on your mask before helping others. Oxygen is flowing even if the bag does not inflate. Life vests are located under, next to, or between your seat. For help locating them, see your safety card. To remove the vest, pull the tab or compartment handle to break the seal. If equipped with an elastic harness, remove the harness before opening the pouch. Take the vest out as shown on the safety card and put it over your head. Wrap the strap around your waist, attach the buckle, and pull tight. Once outside, pull the tab to inflate your vest or blow into the red tube. In the water, a light on your vest will automatically illuminate. If necessary, an infant life vest will be distributed by a crew member. See your safety card for more details on how to use it. We will be dimming the cabin lights for takeoff. Individual reading light controls are at each seat. It's our honor to care for you on your journey. If you have any questions, please refer to your safety card or ask any of the crew members as they do their final cabin check. And as always, let us know if there's anything we can do to make your time with us more enjoyable. This aircraft was equipped with Boeing's Sky Interior, which includes mood light, which was pretty nice. Anyways, after the usual safety demonstration, we started taxiing out to runway 28R slash 10L for takeoff.
Alrighty, so we reached our cruising altitude of 29,000 feet. Overall, this was a pretty smooth flight. I don't know about you guys, but there's just something about flying at night that is so relaxing, especially when the air is smooth. Let's take a look at our flight path this evening. We took off west from ORD, and then immediately turned back east to fly just north of downtown Chicago. We then crossed Lake Michigan and then into the state of Michigan, where we then turned a little southeast to fly just south of Toledo, Ohio, and later the Cleveland Agron area. We then crossed into Pennsylvania, flying just north of Pittsburgh before crossing the Appalachian Mountains, and then crossed Harrisburg where we started our descent into the Philadelphia area. We flew south towards Wilmington, Delaware, and then turned back east to lab for landing on runway 9R-27L at PHL. Not too long after reaching our cruising altitude, the flight attendants came around and did their typical snack and drink service. I just got some water, and they gave some pretzels and the classic Biscoff cookies on this flight. Overall, the flight was pretty smooth and uneventful, so enjoy the relaxing nighttime scenery as we continue towards and descend into the Philadelphia area. We will be parking at gate B14 here at Terminal B at Philadelphia International Airport. Philadelphia is another one of American Airlines' hubs, but unlike Chicago, they are the only airline to have a hub at PHL, so they completely dominate here. Unfortunately, it took a very long time for the jetway operator to arrive at the gate to position the jetway so we could get off, but eventually we were able to deplane. I had a fantastic time in Chicago overall, but it's always nice to return home. Chicago might become my future home though, as after I graduate from college and save some money, I really want to try the big city lifestyle, and Chicago is one of, if not my favorite cities I've been to. I really like the skyscraper architecture, the energy, transit, and other world-class amenities that it has to offer. 
It's definitely not perfect though, as crime is a major problem in certain areas of the city, but there are a lot of things that it does do really well in my opinion. And with that, this trip and video both come to an end. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like and subscribe so that you do not miss my future content. I did upload some content from my Chicago trip on my channel, so be sure to check it out. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.